So in the rest of this webinar, I'm going to show you how professional money managers, the best in the world, they combine different assets and different strategies to generate multiple sources of income and profit under any market condition. So why is this important? Because remember that the market is like the weather, right? And there are some strategies that work really well or some assets that do really well in certain market conditions and don't do well in other market conditions. So there are times when the stock market is trending strongly, very easy to make money. There are times when the stock market is very choppy, difficult to make money. But when the stock market is choppy, the Forex markets could be trending really well. All right. So if you are a great investor who wants to make consistent income, no matter which market condition, it pays to learn different assets. It's, it's kind of like you're running a dessert shop, right? And if you only sell cold desserts, what happens? You won't always do well in every weather. In the hot weather, your cold desserts will sell well. You sell, sell ice cream really well. But cold weather, you may not get much business. But if you sell both cold desserts and hot desserts, there's something to sell in every weather condition, right? In the cold, you sell your hot desserts. In the, in the summer, you sell your ice cream. So that's the point. That's why for me, I trade stocks, I trade Forex and combine it with options. So there's always a way for me to profit where the market goes up, market goes down, market goes sideways, market's choppy, market's trending. All right. Take a look at this, for example. You can see that different assets move very, very differently. For example, you can see that during the financial crisis from 07, the end of 07 to 09, what happened during this period? Ooh. So you can see, for example, this line is the stock market, right? In the financial crisis, the stock market crashed 55%. So at that time, if you're long on stocks, you're buying stocks, you get killed. <laughs> so during that time, if you know how to identify the downtrend in stocks and you short stocks or you use put options, you make money as the stock, as the stock market collapses. But Notice something, as the stock market is going down, what's going up? That's right, commodities are going up. The green line, which is gold, gold is going up. So at that time, in the financial crisis, if you go long on gold by buying the gold ETF, buying gold options, commodity futures, you go long on futures, commodities, you make a killing in the markets. So in any period, there's always something going up, there's always something going down. So when you understand all the assets, there's always something you can use to make money, right? And look at bonds. The blue is long-term bonds, the brown is short-term bonds. And bonds went up during the financial crisis, as you can see over there. So at that period, how did I make money? Really simple. I shorted stocks, I went long on bonds, I went long on gold, and long on commodities by looking at the trends, all right? And you're gonna learn all about following trends, technical analysis, reading trend reversals, in the stock trading course and value momentum investing course, even the options course and forex course as well. Now, on the other hand, if you take a look at this period over here, it's a different story. All right, this was during the economic recovery. When the economy was recovering, what happened to the S&P 500, the stock market? Stock market went up like crazy. So that's when I made a lot of money in stocks. Right? By buying great stocks, by buying the ETF of the S&P, make great money. But as the stock market is going up, gold is collapsing. So that's when I shorted gold. Right, It's all in my monthly reports. It's all in my Telegram chat groups. I said, I'm shorting gold, guys. I shorted gold, made money as gold collapsed. And then what else went down? All right, Commodities went down, like oil. Oil collapsed. Bonds kind of like move sideways at a time. So... Uh, the way to make money in a sideways market is to use uh, options like iron condor or selling covered calls, right? So when you've got all these tools, you know when to deploy the tools. So why do they move differently? It's got to do with interest rates, okay? So for example, during this time, what happens is when interest rates go up, what happens? When interest rates go up, the US dollar goes up. Right, it's always uh, related, right? When the US dollar goes up, what happens? Commodities like gold always goes down. 
because commodities move inverse of the US dollar. So that's why gold collapsed and oil collapsed because the dollar was going up, interest rates were going up. Now, when interest rates go up, what happens to bond prices? Bond prices always move opposite of interest rates. Interest rates go up, bond prices go down. Hence, you can see here, bonds were kind of like flattening, all right? But over here, when interest rates were being cut by the Federal Reserve, bonds were going up because it's the opposite, all right? How do interest rates affect the stock market? Very simple, the chart tells you everything. During the financial crisis, when you were cutting interest rates, when Ben Bernanke, the Fed chair, was cutting interest rates, what happens? Stock market goes down. Sorry, stock market goes down when interest rates go down. But over here, when they started to raise interest rates, stock market goes up. So stock market always rises in tandem with interest rates. The interesting thing is that the moment they announce that we expect interest rates to go up, the stock market drops temporarily for a day, but eventually goes higher. That's the interesting thing about it. So you gotta understand how all these assets are related. We call this macroeconomics. And once you understand this, you can position yourselves with the fundamentals and technical stuff. That's how you make money consistently, all right? Uh, this, uh, this year, in fact, the second half, the stock market was trending strongly. Very easy to make money in stocks, but Forex was very choppy. So I had very few Forex trades the last few months. In fact, this month, I only took about five Forex trades, only five trades the whole month because the market was choppy. Out of the five, I won four and lost one. Still made good money. So you must know when to trade and when to stay out of the water. But earlier this year, the stock market was more choppy. Sorry, last year, the market was more choppy, the stock market. So stocks were a bit frustrating last year when I was trading stocks. But Forex currencies were trending up really nicely. So we made a lot of money trading Forex towards the second half of last year. So the key to successful trading is knowing when to, not empty, sorry, when to employ the right strategy under the right market condition. Another reason why traders fail is because they learn a great strategy from a great mentor, but they apply during the wrong market situation. And the, the guru is making a lot of money, right? Because the guru is trading in a great environment, but once you learn from the guru and the environment changes, what happens? That's right, you start to screw up. It's kind of like you see the guru is skiing on the slopes, right? Because there's a lot of snow. So you say, hey, that looks fun. I wanna learn snow skiing. But after you learn snow skiing, what happened? What happens? Winter ends and summer comes and you find you can't ski anymore. It's not because the strategy didn't work, it's because the weather changed. But eventually the weather will go back to winter again. That's when snow skiing comes to fashion. Really important stuff to understand. So one of the things to understand is the difference between investing and trading and which is better for you, right? By the way, I do both. I've got an investing portfolio and a trading portfolio. And some people just prefer investing and some trading. So let me tell you now the pros and cons and the difference. And you gotta know the difference really well. Now, when you invest in something, you invest in productive assets, which means assets that produce something, they make something, they generate cash flow, like stocks. When you buy stocks, you're buying part of a business that makes products and services that generates profits and cash. So it's productive. Real estate, you rent it out, you get rental. You invest in a farm, you get, you know, you produce corn and wheat, it's productive assets. But in trading, right, most of the time when you trade, you trade speculative assets. So these are assets that they don't make anything, they don't produce anything. Their value is purely psychological. The price is determined by demand and supply like Forex, like crypto, like options and futures. So these are things that you can't invest in them because they are not product, they don't make anything. So when people say I'm investing in crypto, I say it doesn't make sense. You can't invest in crypto. You can't invest in options. You can't invest in futures because these are speculative assets that have no uh, cash flow, right? So, you know, the way to make money is to buy and sell quickly to make a quick gain we call it a zero-sum game. 
Because when you make a dollar, someone loses a dollar to you. All right? It's, it's a transfer of wealth from the idiot trader to the smart trader. But in investing, everyone wins. The business wins, the investor wins, the consumer wins. Whereas trading is win-lose, investing is win-win. Big difference. Now, the good thing about stocks is for stocks, you can invest in it and you can trade it as well. Okay? In investing, we focus on fundamentals. Where we analyze the real estate be behind the read, we analyze the occupancy rate, the, the rental rate, the yield. When we invest in stocks, businesses, we analyze the sales, the profits, the intrinsic value. It's focused on fundamentals. That's how you make money. By trading, the focus is on the charts, technical analysis. Buy on the uptrend, sell on the downtrend, cut loss when the trend changes. All right? It's all on technicals, chart patterns, price action. Okay? In investing, the way to make money is to buy low and sell high eventually when the asset increases in value. So you're looking at something that increases in value. By in trading, you oftentimes don't care about valuation. You don't care about what the business is doing. You're only trading the price action. So you buy high and sell higher. We call this the momentum greater fool's game. See, in trading, normally when you buy, you are fool to buy. But it's okay because you're paying a high price. As long as there's a bigger fool willing to pay a higher price, you're making money. It's like, you know, I first bought Bitcoin at $5,000 about two years ago. When I bought Bitcoin at five grand, I was a complete fool. But it was okay as long as I can sell it to a bigger fool, which I did. So after I bought it at five grand, Bitcoin went to 10 10, 10 grand per Bitcoin. And I sold it at 10 grand, I made five grand profit. I was pretty happy. But guess what? After 10 grand, Bitcoin went to $20,000. And I thought, darn, I missed that even bigger fool. So what happened? When Bitcoin came back down from 20,000 to 14,000, I bought it again. Why? I was hoping that a big fool at 20 grand will still be there, <laughs> but he was not there. And at 14 grand, it started coming down to 12 grand. And I realized that I was, the greater, I was the greatest fool at the time now, buying at 14 grand. So the moment it came to 12 grand, 12,000, what did I do? I quickly cut loss. I got off the markets and I had a losing trade. So the first one, I made five grand. The second one, I lost two grand. So net net, I still made three grand, all right? So the point I'm making is this, that when I invest, for example, I do not, use stop losses. Why? Because when I invest in companies like McDonald's or Google or Amazon, these are great businesses, productive assets. When I invest in the S&P, I know that it will always go up eventually because I've done my fundamental research. So if it goes down, I do not sell. In fact, I buy more as it goes down, I average down because I get a discount. But when I'm trading Forex, I'm trading crypto like Bitcoin, you got to have stop losses. So the moment it goes against you, you can't hold, you can't invest, you gotta get out, you gotta sell. At the same time, the moment it goes up, you gotta take your profits fast. So it's a different strategy, right? Investing is like getting married. When you get married, fundamentals are more important. You look at a person's character, the person's education, the person's values, right? And in, in marriage, if your wife or husband you know, throws a tantrum and they get emotional, you don't cut loss, you don't run away, you stay with them, you comfort them, right? Because they're a good person. But trading is like a one-night stand. For one-night stand, you don't care about fundamentals. You don't care about a person's character. You don't say, hey, before we go to my room, I'd like to know you go to church. Before we go to my room, hey, uh, can I check your university certificate? No, right? In trading, we just look at technicals. If they're attractive, they're sexy, they're hot, we go in to catch the trend, right? And the moment it doesn't last, we've got to cut our loss and get out and go for the next one night stand. And in a one night stand, you got to use stop losses. you gotta, you got to use protection in a one night stand. Right? It's a different philosophy, right? Investing is passive income. Trading is active income. Investing, the time horizon is you're holding for a few years. But it doesn't mean that in investing, you only make money after a few years. 
In fact, my value momentum investing course, I only enter when the trend is right. So the moment I get in, I make money almost immediately. But my time frame for holding is a few years to make a lot of money. But in trading, it's short term. You get in and out within a few weeks, a few days, a few minutes. Short term, different. So which is best for you? Investing, trading, or both? Here are a few questions to ask yourself. Number one, do you prefer to focus on fundamentals or chart patterns? If it's fundamentals, investing is more for you. If you like to look at charts, draw lines, trading is more for you. If you like both like me, you can do both. Okay? Do you prefer high win rates with low frequency or lower win rates with high frequency? Now, let me explain what this means. You see, in investing, your win rate is 90 to 100%, provided you follow my strict principles of buying fundamentally good businesses, which I teach in the Value Momentum Investing course. I can tell you that personally for me, for the last 18 years or so, my win rate for investing has been 100%. 100%. It's not because I'm smart. It's because I only invest in very, very, very good businesses that I know will go up. I only invest in the S&P 500, the Dow Jones that will always go up eventually. I invest in McDonald's, I invest in Procter & Gamble, and these companies are products I use every day, they will always go up. If you buy McDonald's today, what's the chance you'll be higher in a few years? I can tell you it's almost 100%. But if you buy McDonald's today, what's the chance you'll be higher tomorrow or next week? Not 100%. Not 90%, only 40 to 60%. So in trading, your win rate is much lower. Your win rate is 45 to 60%. In fact, the best traders in the world only have a 60% win rate. I can tell you that. Many professional traders would sell their grandmother for a 60% win rate. But you've learned in my trading webinars that even if your win rate is 50%, you're still making a lot of money. Because when you win, you win $2, you lose, you lose $1. So if you're just right half the time, you're making a lot of money. But in trading, it's high frequency. You have to go in and out very fast. Okay? A lot of more effort and more skills required. But investing is easier. You just buy it, just leave it there, let it grow. Alright? So back to that question. If you're someone who does not like to take does not like to see losses, right? If you see losses, you get upset, right? You see a losing trade, you go back, you kick your dog, you slap your wife, not for you. <laughs> you get a winning trade, you pet your dog, you hug your wife, not for you. You're too emotional. So people who are really emotional, who are, have a lot of anxiety, they can't do trading. You go nuts. Even if you make money, you have to spend a lot of money on therapy. Better to be an investor, a lot easier, a lot simpler. But if you're someone who can detached from your emotions. Like, I'm not really emotional, right? I can have a loss and go, whatever, right? I can trade, all right? To be a trader, you have to be much more disciplined and focused and able to manage your emotions. So investing is kind of like you're driving a car, a Volvo, at 80 kilometers per hour, and it's safe, it's easy, it gets you there. Trading is like Formula One racing. Yeah, it's exciting. You get there really fast, but you're going to be really focused. The moment you lose focus for a few seconds in Formula 1, you crash and burn. So to be a trader, you got to be really focused. you got to have the discipline. If not, investing is better. Yeah. Okay. Is your objective wealth accumulation or cash flow generation? If it's wealth accumulation, investing. If you want to make quick cash, more of trading. So I tend to use Forex and stop trading to generate quick cash and then I put it into my investment and real estate portfolio to compound for wealth accumulation. Okay, how much time do you have to look at your portfolio and the market? If you can only look at a market once in a while, investing is better for you. If you can look at it less than an hour every day, then you can do swing trading or trend following. But if you can look at the markets two to three hours every day, 
You've got a discipline, you can do day trading or scalping. It's up to you. Now, let me share with you the difference, the pros and cons between stocks, forex and options. Three of the things that I trade, I invest in regularly, right? So first, the stock market. Now understand that through the stock market, what can you buy? First, you can buy shares of companies. So basically, you're buying a part of a business, right? You're buying a business. Or you can buy ETFs, which is a basket of many companies. Or you can buy REITs, Real Estate Investment Trust, which means you're buying a basket of real estate properties to generate rental income. So advantages of the stock market is you're investing in productive assets, which means they will always grow over time, provided you pick the good businesses and the good real estate, which again we'll cover in the value momentum investing course. And if you invest in ETFs, no worries, because stock indexes always rise over time. In a stock market, you can invest in stocks or you can trade it. It's both, all right? It's like some assets can only be traded and not invested in. It's like Forex, you can trade, you can't invest. Crypto, you can trade, you can't invest. It's like some people make very good girlfriends and boyfriends, very good one-night stands, but really terrible spouses, okay? But the stock market is like a person who can be both a good husband and wife and a good one-night stand. <laughs> they're both exciting and they're reliable, right? Like my wife. <laughs> anyway, objectives of the stock market. If you use the stock market, you can use it for investing for wealth accumulation as well as cash flow because with stocks, you collect dividends. And you can also trade stocks for short-term cash as well. Trend following swing trading and day trading in the stock market. There we go. So that's the stock market for you, very flexible. Next, Forex markets. Now Forex, basically you are trading one nation's currency against another nation's currency. So it is a speculative asset. It's not a productive asset, zero sum game. So in Forex, you can't invest in it. You gotta trade it with stop losses and profit targets, get in and get out really fast. Win rate, 40, 50, 60%. When you win, you win two, you lose, you lose one, you make quick money that way. So advantages, 24 hour market, you can trade anytime around your day job, and you can actually start with Forex with very little capital, with $200, $500, $1,000, because Forex allows you to leverage one is to 50 or one is to 100 which means you could buy, for example, um, you know, $50 worth of currencies with a dollar in capital, okay? Objectives of Forex markets is purely for trading to generate short-term cash. Again, you can use trend following, swing trading, day trading, or scalping for Forex. So I day trade Forex, I swing trade stocks, I invest in stocks. Finally, my favorite, options. Options are the most powerful tool that you can use to turbocharge stocks, forex, or futures. Okay, so options are kind of like, it's like, you know, as a soldier, you've got your weapon, right? Um, so like stocks is maybe like your, for stocks, maybe you're like an infantry soldier. Forex, you're kind of like Navy SEAL, or you're kind of like a naval diver, right? So different, uh, yeah, different wa warfare, right? But options basically equip you with additional equipment. It's kind of like, the soldier options is kind of like getting now an RPG or rocket launcher or grenade launcher, or now you've got an extra uh, weapon, all right, that helps you, right? So an option is a derivative of an asset that allows the buy of the option the right to buy or sell that asset at an agreed upon price within an expiry date. And again, do watch my webinar on, on options to really understand what the heck that means, right? So basically, you can trade options on stocks, options on currency futures, and options on commodity futures. Options allow you to turbocharge and protect the stocks, forex, and commodities futures portfolio. So advantages of options, very useful whether you are an investor 
or a trainer. Both use options. Warren Buffett is the biggest options user in the world. He uses options to generate extra income for his portfolio, in case you did not know that. Options allow you to minimize risk and boost returns for stock, forex, and futures trading. So again, what's the objective of using options? Number one, options can be used to protect and boost returns for your investment portfolio. Your long-term investments, you can use options to protect it during a downturn and to generate additional income by selling covered calls. Next, you can use options to minimize risk and boost returns while trading short-term trading stocks forex or commodity futures you can go long by using call options or going short using put options options also allow you to generate profits under any market conditions so when the market is going sideways going nowhere you can make a lot of money with options with strategies like the iron condor and uh, the snipex strategy which we teach in our advanced options trading course so do check that out so how do I combine these different assets in my portfolio? So for me, I am both I both have an investment portfolio and a trading portfolio. And it's good to keep them separate because they've got separate set of rules. If not, you may get confused. You buy something, is it a trade or invest? You gotta keep it separate. It's like you know, if you're a marriage and a one night stand, you gotta keep those two people separate. If they meet, they're gonna kill you. Just kidding, right? Okay, so my investing portfolio is passive income. Trading is active income. So for investing, I've got my value momentum stock portfolio. This is where I buy undervalued growth companies that are really, really good businesses that compound in value over time. Like, you know, Amazon, like Google, like Apple, right? Like, like Nike. And my target for this portfolio is 30 to 50% returns per annum. Now, as you know, most investors don't get 30 to 50%. If they get 10 to 12%, they're really happy. So how am I able to get 30 to 50% returns on average and to beat the S&P every year? It's because I use value momentum investing, which means I combine fundamentals with technical analysis that very few people do and I turbocharge my portfolio with options. I use put options to protect against downturns, and I sell covered calls to generate income every month from the markets. Now, how long do I take for this entire approach? Less than 30 minutes a day. There you go, okay? I also have a real estate and REIT portfolio where I hold REITs, real estate investment trusts. And these are all real estate, which I diversify. So my REITs own properties in China, in the US, in Europe, in Australia, all around the world. And I generate yield or dividend yield for cash flow. And my yields are minimum 5% per year, minimum. Okay, so my targeted return for this portfolio is 11%. 5% from dividends, 6% from capital gain in the property values. This takes me less than 10 minutes a day. Now, for my trading portfolio, I trade Forex and options. So for Forex trading, I day trade currency pairs. I get in and out within the day, and usually I get five to 15% returns a month. I trade the bounce strategy, momentum breakout, and new scalping. Now this takes me two to three hours a day a bit more time, but I love trading. It's my hobby as well. And I also trade st stocks, swing trade stocks. I, I do trend continuation as well as reversal strategies. I trade retracements, breakouts and reversals. We call this directional swing trades. And I combine options to boost returns and to minimize risk. I also use non-directional strategies like the Snipex and Iron Condor, where I make money if the market goes sideways, if the stock market goes nowhere. This, I make five to 15% return a month as well, about an hour a day. So again, different strategies, I combine them, like the business selling hot and cold desserts to make money in any market condition. 
So a very common question I get from students is, and which course should I pick from you? All right, the courses all seem great. And again, it depends. I hope that during this webinar, you get a better sense. Are you more of an investor or trader? Or you like to do both? And uh, how much time you have to spend in the markets? Okay, so again, if you like investing, okay, then you can take the value momentum investing course. And I suggest with that value momentum investing course, you can also take the options course to combine with investing to protect your portfolio and to generate regular income. Now, if you like trading, you can look at stock trading, right? Trading stocks. So take the stock trading course and combine it with options as well. So options is a good add-on to anything, right? So combine with options so you learn to minimize risk, maximize returns for your stock swing trading strategies. Right now, if you have a lot more time to look at the markets, at least two to three hours a day, then yeah, look at forex trading. Forex is a lot of fun. Uh, forex is more or less on its own. I don't really use options to trade forex. I trade forex directly by itself. All right, and we'll be soon launching our real estate REITs investment course sometime next year. So take a look. Um, do look out for that as well. And I've said this many times. I'll say it one more time that learning to trade and invest in the financial markets is the only skill that can guarantee you income for the rest of your life. So it's not a skill that's nice to learn, that's good to learn, it's an essential skill that we have to learn. Why? Because nowadays, even if you go to the top universities and you, you learn engineering or accounting or medicine and you get all these degrees, these skills can't guarantee us an income in five to 10 years because we can get replaced by someone else, younger or cheaper or faster, or by a foreigner. No offense to foreigners, right? You can get replaced by a robot or artificial intelligence. The world is changing so fast, okay? But when you can trade the financial markets, when you can create passive income from your investments, then anywhere in the world, as long as you've got a computer, you've got an internet, you've got the skills that no one can take away from you, you can create income for the rest of your life. You can create security and freedom for the rest of your life, right? And, and that's why I say it's a recession-proof life skill that will create an income stream that will last you for a lifetime. And the greatest investment you can make is an investment in yourself. Before you invest a cent into the markets or trade your hard-earned money, please invest in yourself because you are the greatest investment. You are. No one can take that away from you, all right? You know, it's a scary world out there. Automation is going to wipe out almost half of all jobs in 20 years. And that's not just us, that's our children as well. So that's why I'm teaching my kids all these skills as well. Because you never know what's going to happen in the future. All right. Someone as famous as Kenny G. You know Kenny G, the famous musician? As music sales fall, he's now turned to stock picking for his income. All right, if you read on Reuters, right, uh, his earning potential is eaten away by digital music, which pays less than physical album sales and online piracy. These days, he spends his morning in front of the computer trading stocks in his portfolio. Over the last decade, he has earned about as much money from stock trading as from music. Today, Kenny G is worth over $40, $50 million. Half of that is from the stock market. So if someone so famous like Kenny G he realizes that, hey, you know what? I can't just depend on music for my income. I have to create another source of income, multiple sources of income. If he thinks that way, we all have to do that for ourselves. Think about it, all right? So I do hope you grab this opportunity. Black Friday, not much time left. Grab these courses at a massive 70% discount. So if you want to be the first to get my next video on YouTube, do click the subscribe button right now. If you want to check out my online courses, go on to piranaprofits.com where you can enroll in our professional forex, stock trading, options trading, and value momentum investing courses where you're going to learn how to trade like a professional and generate an income anywhere in the world. If you would like to come to Singapore to attend my live classes, Wealth Academy, go on to wealthacademyglobal.com. It's Adam Koo and may the markets be with you.